I refuse to eat pumpkin pie without whipped cream. Hello friends, Tara here, but you can call me T-Pow. Today I'm gonna be combining two of my favorite things, fall decor and DIY. It's safe to say I'm on Pinterest a lot. And because their algorithm is pretty good, they know exactly what to show me, and that is DIY decor. But I can't spend all of my money in craft stores. Today I decided to focus my DIYs on one of the most affordable, versatile, and easy to find craft materials that I know of, which is felt. Now, technically the third DIY is felting, but it still fits the theme, so we're gonna roll with it. So today I'm gonna be making three inexpensive felt fall decor pieces that are Pinterest inspired. A felt pie garland, a felt flower wreath, and many felted pumpkins. So first we're gonna be making the pie pennant which was inspired by this photo that I saw on Pinterest. All you need to make this is some felt, some twine, a good pair of scissors, and some hot glue. Now you'll notice when I'm making this that you can pretty much freestyle most of it, but if you want to have some sort of guide, I did make a simple template that you can print out and use to cut out your pieces, but you certainly can just freestyle it and it'll probably be fine because it's mostly just cutting out triangles. So my pie garland is going to have six slices, just like the picture. I would say that almost all felt sheets come in nine by 12. So if you're using the template, you'll also get six slices out of your sheet of felt. And then you can cut these out because just like in a real pie, the crust is going to be the base. Now that I have my crust, the next thing I'm going to cut out is my pie filling, which is just going to be a slightly smaller triangle that goes on top of the crust. So for my six pieces, I've chosen red, a deep purple, a pumpkin orange, a yellow, and then I'm actually going to cut out two browns. One is going to be for the pecan pie and one is going to be for a chocolate cream pie. So same thing, I'm just tracing my template onto the felt and I'm going to cut it out. Alright, so now I have my six fillings and my six crusts and I'm just going to glue the filling onto the crust, but you just want to make sure that the points are almost aligned but not quite and you leave room for the crust at the top. All right, so I've done all of my filling and there's one slice that has an additional layer of crust on top, which is this purple one. So for that, I'm gonna use the same crust template and the same crust color. And then for the crust cutouts, I'm just drawing these kind of long teardrop shapes that I'm then going to carefully cut out. This is why you want a good pair of scissors and it actually helps if you can fold your felt in half along the teardrop and cut it out like you would if you were making a paper snowflake. Now I'm going to line that up on my crust and just trim a little bit and then you're just going to line that up and glue it down on your slice so that the purple peeks through. Now for my red and my yellow pies, I'm going to have the crust crisscrossing on the top. I've only ever made pumpkin pie and chocolate cream pie in real life, so I don't actually know what that technique is called. I know how to do it with felt. So I had some scraps left over from the piece that I cut all of the crust out of. They're already pretty thin, but I'm gonna make them even thinner to be about a centimeter wide because I'm going to then crisscross them on these two pieces to make it look like a real pie. <laughs> so to do this, I'm just laying down the strips over the pie in one direction, and then I'm gonna get the placement right of them going the other direction, and then I'm just going to put some over the top of others the way you would if you were doing this in real life. So you basically just want to use the pattern of over, under, over, under. Once I have them positioned right, I'm actually going to glue them before I trim them just to make sure I have enough. And then once it's all glued down and secure, I can go back and trim. So that's one slice complete and I just did a similar pattern on the red pie. Next for our pumpkin pie and our chocolate cream pie, I wanted to top these with a little whipped cream. So in the template there's a little circle, it's an inch and a quarter diameter and you're going to cut out three of these per slice because we're going to fold this in such a way that it looks like a little dollop of whipped cream. So just like before, I'm tracing this on to my white felt 
and because I'm making two slices, I'm going to need six of them because we're using three per slice. So the way we're going to make our whipped cream is we're just going to fold our circles twice. So we're going to fold it in half once and then in half again. And you'll have this little triangle or fan shape. So when we glue it down, we're first going to glue the bottom down and then we're just going to glue that other fold down as well. But that by itself doesn't look like whipped cream, so we're actually going to do the same thing to the other two and arrange them in a circle shape on the pie slice so that then it will look like whipped cream. And then once you've glued down all your pieces, you can just fluff them up a little bit so that they kind of meet in the middle. And when you're done, it kind of looks like whipped cream. After looking at it a little bit, I decided I'm gonna put a little bit of glue at the top to like pull all of the pieces up into the middle and I think that really gives the effect of whipped cream. And I'm just gonna repeat the same thing on my pumpkin pie slice because I refuse to eat pumpkin pie without whipped cream. Our last slice is pecan pie so I have two different colors that I'm gonna be using for the pecans and I have my little template. I think I'm gonna need about six of these but if it ends up being a different number, I will update the template that you can download below. So to make the little pecans, I'm just taking the little oval that I've cut out and I'm pinching it in the middle and kind of pulling it together to make it a little skinnier and to give it that three-dimensional look. And then I'm just taking the hot glue and if you turn it upside down, there's kind of like two flat edges. I'm just putting some glue on the flat edges while still pinching, flipping it over, and gluing it down. And I'm just going to repeat this for as many as it takes to cover the pie. So here is my finished little pecan pie. It did take 12. I did six of each color, but there's one thing left to do for all of these and that's to add the crust on the edge. So for the crust, I'm going to cut six three quarter inch wide strips off of the short edge of the felt. So they'll be nine inches long and three quarters of an inch wide. So to make the crust, I'm just taking each strip onto the pie and I'm honestly, I have no plan here. I'm just gonna play around like folding it different ways so that it looks like pie crust. So for this first one, I'm just kind of folding the felt back on itself as I go across and that looks good so I'm just gonna glue it that way. I think my goal is to have three designs and have them repeat twice and so for this one all I'm doing is I glued it at the end and then every little bit I'm just putting a strip of hot glue and then folding the felt back on itself onto the hot glue to make this kind of wavy looking crust. So I have this, but as you can see, it's not glued down yet. So now that I'm satisfied with it, I can go back and glue it down onto the pie crust. And then I'm just trimming the excess. So for the second type of crust, I'm taking one of those strips and I'm starting at one end and then all I'm doing is twisting the strip but keeping it flat. So it kind of looks like those cine twists from Taco Bell except flat. <laughs> so I'm going to glue at one end and then I'm just twisting and gluing, twisting and gluing. And for the third crust design, I'm taking the strip and I'm going to fold it back and forth accordion style like you would if you were making yourself a paper fan and then I'm going to do that all the way across gluing as I go along. The only difference is that for this one I'm going to glue as I go and then attach it when I'm done with the entire crust. Otherwise it would be really hard to fold because it ends up being really tiny. So this accordion method uses up felt pretty fast and when I finished with the strip it had only reached about half of the pie. So I'm going to continue on with the scraps from the other crust and hopefully that will cover the rest of this. So with all of the scraps from the other crust I was able to finish these two accordion crusts. So I'm finally done with all of my pie slices and the only thing left to do is attach them to the twine and actually make them into a garland. So I have four feet of twine here and I'm going to fold it in half just so I know where the middle is. And then all you have to do is literally hot glue the twine to the back of your pie slices. And then I'm gonna measure and leave three inches between each slice. And here is my finished pie garland. <laughs> I just think this is so cute. 
I put my two favorite pieces in the middle, of course, and there's enough string on either end where you can either tie it into a loop if you're going to hang it off of something, or just tie it onto something, like if you have a railing in your house or whatever you want to tie it onto. But there you go, a pie garland. Next, I'm going to be making the felt floral wreath. Now this is actually something I have more experience with. In the spring I uploaded a video where I made succulent letterboard ornaments and it's basically the same process to make any type of felt flower. So to make this you'll need an assortment of colors of felt. If you happen to be watching this in another season you can just make the same thing but in different colors for a different season. But I'm going to be using four different colors plus a green for leaves. I have some floral wire which I may or may not end up using. It depends on how easy it is to attach the flowers to this which is a metal floral hoop and mine is gold because I spray painted it gold but it was actually silver when I found it and it's literally just this metal hoop and mine is 12 inches wide in diameter but there's all different sizes and if you want to have a more natural looking wreath you can obviously buy just a wreath insert here what they're called but I wanted to keep this kind of chic and minimalist looking and this is a lot cheaper than those this was only two dollars so out of this burgundy colored felt I'm going to be making a dahlia which will be the largest flower in the wreath so it's going to take the most felt so in order to make this first I'm cutting my felt into five equal strips it's technically 2.4 inches but you can eyeball it and just do like two and a half inches it doesn't have to be that exact so I have five roughly even strips and I'm going to fold them in half lengthwise and cut them in half fold them again and fold them again I'm gonna keep doing this until I have 40 pieces of roughly equal size. It does not need to be exact, so don't worry. So once you have your 40 little rectangles, you're going to take your rectangles and you're just going to trim them into kind of a teardrop shape. And it should look a little something like this. Now if you're wondering why I'm not just using a template for this, it's because flowers in nature don't have a template. All the petals are different sizes. They might be roughly the same shape, but they're definitely all different, and that's what I'm trying to mimic here. 40 might sound like a lot, but it actually goes pretty fast, and you can definitely do this while you're watching TV or listening to a podcast. Now that you have your pile of petals, you could stop here and throw these on your bed and pretend you're in a romantic comedy, or you can continue with me to make a dahlia. Like most felt flowers start, we start in the middle. So have your hot glue ready and you're going to take one of the petals and you're going to fold it in half and you're going to glue it so it's folded in half two thirds of the way up. Then you're going to take another flower petal and do the same thing, folding it in half and gluing two thirds of the petal. And then you're going to take these two pieces and place them together so they're facing the opposite way and glue them together. So now you kind of have this flat flower middle. Next you're going to take another flower petal and this is how we're going to fold the remaining 38 petals. But this time you're only going to fold the bottom third or so and glue that together so that the rest of the petal is still open. You'll take that piece and you'll glue it directly to the middle that you've created so that it sticks out like so. And then you're just going to keep repeating this process, folding the bottom, gluing it together, then gluing that bottom that you folded to the outside. And then what you want to do is continue gluing around the outside in the same direction. So if you choose to go counterclockwise, just keep going counterclockwise all the way around until you've attached all of your petals. And it should look something like this when you're done, like a dahlia, hopefully. The next flower I'm going to be making is a ranunculus, which I often think is a peony, but it's not actually a peony. So to make this one, we're going to need 15 squares. Five are going to be one inch by one inch squares. Five are going to be one and a quarter by one and a quarter inch squares. And the other five are going to be one and a half by one and a half inch squares. Now that you have your squares, all you're going to do is round out the corners and make them into more of a circle. Again, don't worry about them all being exactly the same because they wouldn't be the same if they were real. And then once you have your round petals, 
you're going to make two slits in the bottom about a centimeter apart and then you're going to overlap the little slits then you're going to put a little drop of glue so that the petal makes a little bowl shape you're going to do this for all of the petals all right so now we're going to start assembling it so we're going to start with the smallest petals first i'm going to put a little dot of glue in the bottom and kind of fold it in half so that it's kind of a circular middle of the flower and then just like before we're going to put a little dot of glue on the bottom and then we're going to attach it to our middle flower make sure you're putting the little dip of the petal towards the middle as you go around so I'm just going to continue clockwise around the flower and I'm going to use up all of the small ones then move to the medium ones and then do the big ones. So it should look something like this after the small ones, something like this after the medium ones, and it'll look like this when you're all finished. The next two flowers are going to be made from the same template, and that template can be found in the description down below. It's called the succulent template. The templates are free and they're made by Hallmark, and they're the same templates that I use to make my succulents, but I thought the shape of this particular succulent in a flower color would look good in this wreath. So we're going to be making one medium one and one large one. So all you have to do is print out the template and then you're going to cut out the three sized pieces. And then we're just going to cut out different amounts of them for the different sizes of flowers. So for the medium one, we're going to cut out four of A, three of B, and three of C. And for the large one, we're going to cut out five of A, four of B, and six of C. So to make this quick and easy for myself, I'm just taking a piece of scotch tape and putting it on the back of the template, sticking that on the felt, and then cutting out a rough rectangle around it. And it just takes a few more quick snips to make it pointy on each end. Doing it like this means you don't have to trace anything, you don't have to measure anything. It literally goes so fast. I'm gonna cut out all my pieces and then I'll show you how to put it together. We're gonna take the smallest petal first and we're going to fold it in half but offset it a little bit so that you're not meeting the points together. Glue that like that and then just for this middle piece we're going to take it by the bottom and roll it into a tube so that it makes the middle of the succulent. Your middle piece should look something like that and then for every petal after that you'll fold it as an offset but instead of rolling it you'll make a thin line of glue along the bottom edge and then you roll it along the bottom. And then continue doing this until you've gone through all of the smallest pieces and then all of the medium sized pieces and then all of the large sized pieces. And you can literally repeat the same exact process for your large version. You'll just have more pieces. The last two types of flowers that we're going to make are literally the fastest and easiest ways to make felt flowers, rolling them. So for this first one, you'll take a piece of felt and off of the longer edge, the 12 inch edge, measure in two and a half inches. So you'll have a rectangle that's 12 inches by two and a half inches. Once you have that, you're gonna fold it in half, hot dog style, and glue the ends together with a thin line of glue. Make sure you don't glue the folded end together. And then on the edge that's folded over, you're going to take your scissors and every centimeter or so, you're going to cut into it at about a 45 degree angle. And then starting at one end, you're just gonna begin to roll this up, gluing every so often as you go. When you're done, you can kind of spread out the little petals with your fingers and you get something that looks like this. It's by far one of the fastest flowers you can make out of felt. Our last flower is also a rolled flower, but we're gonna cut it out a little bit differently. You wanna cut out a shape on your felt that looks somewhat like this. So what I do is first I cut out a circle from my felt, and then I go around the circle making it a scalloped edge. So it'll look something like this, and then I continue to scallop, but instead of it being on the edge, I spiral the scallop in to the circle. And when you get done, you'll have something that looks like this. And then to turn this into a flower, start at this middle piece, doing what we've done the whole time, folding up the bottom and gluing it into a petal. Keeping the rounded part on top, you just continue to wrap around the middle and it slowly forms a flower. 
Now obviously the benefit to these rolled flowers are that they're super easy to make and they're super fast. The only downside I feel is that they never look as realistic as the other flowers where you cut out each individual petal. But they are really good if you're a beginner or if you have a project that's going to take like a ton of flowers. But if you're doing something that's going to have less flowers like this wreath is, I think it's good to have a mix of both because people's eyes will be drawn to the more realistic looking flowers and then these flowers can fill in some of the dead space. But if you're following along with me, you can totally pause the video and you can make like multiples of the same flower. Obviously the sky's the limit when it comes to felt flowers. One thing I want to stress, and I should have stressed this at the beginning of the video, I think that there's a lot of people out there that make these felt flower tutorials that want you to spend money on like a template or they make you think that it's too much work to cut out on your own so that you need a Cricut or something. But honestly, I make these all the time and I find it really relaxing and I never have thought to myself, gee, I wish I had like a machine to cut these out because I feel like it's already such an easy process and once you start complicating it like that, the novelty and the fact that it's inexpensive kind of goes away for me at that point. So. Those are just my thoughts. But here is our completed rolled flower. And now we're finally ready to assemble our wreath. So I'm going to start with my big feature flower, which is my dahlia. First I'm hot gluing the floral wire to the back of my flower. And then once the glue is dry, I'm actually going to glue the dahlia to the floral wreath as well as wrap the wire around it. Now if you're using something else for a wreath, something that's wider, you can probably just hot glue the flowers directly to the wreath. But mine is so skinny that I just want like a double security system. And that's on there. So to expedite the process, I'm just gluing all of my wire down at once. I also recommend working from the back of your flowers because they're always going to be flat at the back. Alright, so here's how it looks with all the flowers on, but I still think it needs a little bit of greenery. So, to make leaves, I'm literally just freehanding a teardrop shape, and then I'm doing that trick where I fold in the bottom edge and glue it to just give the leaf some dimension. And then you can just glue these from the back so that they stick out under the flowers. You make some big ones, some small ones, you can go crazy. And that is my completed floral wreath. I find making these flowers really relaxing. I could literally sit here for hours and just make them. Honestly, I could fill this whole wreath, but I just wanted to do this like offset look. And you could totally stop there, but because I had some burlap ribbon lying around, I decided to make a little hanging method. So I'm just folding the ribbon in half and then I'm going to pull the two ends through the loop and pull to make a knot so it'll look like this and then you can just adjust it to where you want your wreath to hang from. I think I want mine like right there and then you have all of this extra ribbon that you can use to hang it from your door or wherever. Adding the ribbon really gives it that fall vibe. Our last Pinterest inspired DIY is felting. I never heard of felting until like literally four months ago and I was so intrigued by it because it just looks like you're stabbing cotton and then it magically turns into something. I didn't understand it so I had to try it for myself. And for my first foray into felting I decided to make mini pumpkins. And now I'm going to show you how to do it. So for felting to work, you have to be working with 100% wool roving. You can definitely find it in craft stores, but I bought mine from Etsy. I will link it down below because I found a seller that makes these packs that have color schemes. So there was an autumn pack that had all of the colors I needed to make my pumpkin. Obviously your pumpkin can be any color you want, but I'm going to show you how to make a classic orange one. You'll also need felting needles. Felting needles are a very specific type of needle. They have tiny little barbs on the end and that is what allows the fibers in the roving to stick together and become a permanent 
thing. I was able to find a kit that had a piece of foam block included. It's really tiny, but for what I'm doing, it's perfect. You will need something you can put under what you're working on. The only other thing you'll need for your pumpkin is some kind of thread or embroidery floss that somewhat matches the color of your roving. So to start, I'm just pulling off a little bit of roving You'd be surprised how little you need. I have about this long, I don't know, maybe it's about 14 inches, but it's kind of thin, so I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm just going to roll it up, kind of like a cinnamon roll, and then be very careful with the needle. You do not want to stab yourself with this because it has barbs and it's going to hurt really badly. Go slow if you have to. But right at the edge where you have this kind of seam where you've rolled up your cinnamon bun, you're going to take your needle and you're just going to start poking at the edge so that your spiral doesn't come undone. For me that took about 20 seconds. Now I have this little ball that isn't coming apart. So then I'm going to go to my top edge where you would see your little spiral and I'm just going to kind of pull the outer fibers towards the middle to kind of cover up that spiral. And I'm going to do that on both sides. So at this point I kind of just have this loose ball. So now I'm going to go around and I'm just going to start pressing in somewhat evenly all around to just compress my ball a little bit. Make sure you continue to rotate it so that it stays somewhat even, but don't worry if it's not a perfect sphere because we are going to compress it into a pumpkin shape anyway. And most importantly, watch your fingers. <laughs> so this is what mine looks like now. It's not super tight, but it's not as loose as it was before. And now it's time to form it into a pumpkin. So I'm taking some orange embroidery floss and I'm just threading it into an embroidery needle and I'm coming up through the middle of the little pumpkin and then what I'm going to do is come down on the outside and then back up through the middle. I'm going to pull it to compress the shape a little bit because pumpkins usually aren't perfectly round, they're kind of compressed. Then I'm going to come around the opposite side and come back up through the top and I'm going to continue around until I have made six sections in my little pumpkin. You don't have to pull it super tight but you want to pull it tight enough that it creates that little dimple and you have six clear sections around the pumpkin. When you've finished you can just tie off your knot but of course a pumpkin needs a stem and possibly a leaf. For that we're going to take a super small amount of brown roving, like less than you think you need because you'd be surprised how quick this comes together and you can always add more. So always take less than you think you need. I'm folding mine over a few times until I have something that looks like this and then I'm going to come over to my foam block and I'm going to hold about half of the bunch over the foam and I'm just going to start pressing it together to make a little stem. So what I do is I press onto it and then I pull in fibers from the side to condense it a little bit more until it's about the width that I want it to be. Then I flip it over. My stems usually end up being about a centimeter tall. And I just keep rotating it on the block until all of the loose fibers have been felted into the stem. And then once you're happy with your stem, you can take your pumpkin and I've trimmed some of the extra off. And what I'm going to do is position the stem where I want it. And then I'm just going to push the excess roving into the pumpkin. And that's what's going to attach the stem to your pumpkin. Now, if you want to make a little leaf for your pumpkin, pull off like such a small amount of roving, like it will look like a wisp of nothing, but I promise you it's enough. Fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And then just like we did with the stem, we're just going to start condensing this little loop that we've made. You might think you should do this directly on the pumpkin, but because the pumpkin is made of roving, if you do this, it will just be stuck flat to the pumpkin instead of sticking out from the pumpkin like a regular leaf would. You have to make it on your little foam block first and then put it on your pumpkin. So I have my little leaf. I'm going to bring back my pumpkin. Even though I said it looked like nothing, I'm trimming some of the roving off. And then I'm positioning my leaf kind of where I want it. And then I'm going to start pushing those extra fibers into the pumpkin. And there you have it. An adorable little 
felted pumpkin. And I swear to you, this took less than 10 minutes, maybe even less than five if I wasn't recording. These are so fun and quick to make. They make great little gifts for your friends and family. I even went a little crazy and decided to make a little tiny jack-o-lantern and it was so easy. I don't know where this has been all my life. I'm sure if I was trying to make something actually complicated, it would be actually complicated. But if you've never tried felting before and you want a place to start, this is a great place to start. It turned out to be a very inexpensive, quick, and rewarding hobby to try. Perfect for all of the free time a lot of us have right now. Well, that's all for me today. I think I'm gonna go make like 50 more of these pumpkins. So as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.